the third meeting of the Special Political and Decolonization Committee, the fourth committee, is called to order. We'll start off by asking you, Chief Minister, um, Spain went first before you spoke. We heard the Spanish delegate highlight bilateralism over trilateralism, territorial integrity over the right to self-determination. What did you make of Spain's contributions to the fourth committee today? Well, we've heard it all before. And we know that what they are saying in this uh, august institution has very little basis in fact. And I think you know, there are people in Spain who write speeches for ambassadors in New York who should be embarrassed about what they are sending up to New York. Frankly, to put in the mouth of uh, the distinguished ambassador of Spain in the United Nations that there is an investigation by the European Commission into environmental matters affecting Gibraltar. Well, they might have liked to have told the UN also that in respect of each of those matters, the Commission has found in favor of Gibraltar. To say that there is a scandalous system of taxation in Gibraltar because people are only taxed on that which is remitted or earned in Gibraltar as if to suggest there was something strange about that, when in fact 27 of the member states of the European Union in the code group of the EU, made up even of tax technocrats, are found in favour of Gibraltar in that respect. And only one, surprise, surprise, Spain voted against. It's a sort of score we're getting used to seeing when it comes to us against Spain. The Commission you know, finding in our favour against Spain. The whole of the code group finding in our favour against Spain. So to come here and make those points, in particular when there are 195 states in the United Nations and many, the United Kingdom included, but many other Commonwealth countries instead, will also have a system of taxation based on territoriality as it's known, where you're only taxed as Gibraltar taxes on what you earn and remit to a particular state. So frankly, I think the speech does not say much for those who are putting forward Spain's claim. They make those arguments, of course, with a lot of bluster, but we're able to meet them with much more forthright and absolutely accurate statements on behalf of the government and people of Gibraltar. Do you think that Spain's push for territorial integrity is also about Catalonia as well as Gibraltar? It may very well be that uh, the Catalonia issue you know, preys on the minds of those who prepare the speech, but the, the issue of territorial integrity appears to have been an issue for Spain for the past 311 years, not just since Catalonia decided to hold uh, elections based on the issue of independence. Of course it may be an issue, but I think with Gibraltar there is a particular Spanish obsession with territorial integrity and it has little to do with the other very many regional issues which Spain faces today con el compromiso del Reino Unido para encontrar juntos una solución. Así lo convinieron los entonces ministros de la Unión Europea. Así lo convinieron los entonces ministros de la Unión Europea. Así lo convinieron los entonces ministros de la Unión Europea. You've turned Spain's phrase that Gibraltar is the last colony in Europe on its head and you've claimed that the Spanish government are in fact the last colonialists in Europe. For two reasons. First of all, because we are still only a colony because of Spain. We would have been taken off the list of non-self-governing territories if Spain did not object. All the other territories that have achieved even less of a measure of self-government than we have, perhaps even less developed and less sophisticated than Gibraltar, have been removed from the list before. But also because Señor Madrigallo has gone around the General Assembly making the assertion that he is anti-colonialism. When in fact, what he is doing in relation to Gibraltar is bare-faced neo-colonialism, trying to take away our sovereignty over our heads without allowing us a vote or say in the process. Well, that must be colonialism, if it's not something even worse. And you've also sought to highlight the fact that Gibraltar has put in place, as you say, uh, many of the building blocks of nationhood in the past 12 months, for example, the Gibraltar University and also the Gibraltar International Bank and that in this way, perhaps Gibraltar is more qualified than some nations that have been already delisted to be named a self-governing territory by the UN. Well, what I've said is that under successive political administrations, I haven't claimed the credit for my administration or said this has all happened in the past year, that under successive political administrations, we have put in place the building blocks of nationhood. Remember that when we come here to the fourth committee, we are technically reporting on events in the past year. So I've wanted to highlight the Gibraltar Bank, the Gibraltar International Bank, our national bank, and the Gibraltar University as the things that have happened in the past year which are relevant to that nation that we are building. 
that nation which we have built and which therefore should not be on the list of non-self-governing territories. Although always with the caveat that if the committee or the C24 were to believe that there is something in our political structure, in our constitutional makeup, which needs to be changed so that we are able to take that last step of maximum possible level of self-government short of independence, they should tell us and not keep silent so that we can pursue that issue with the United Kingdom and then come here and say you have told us this is what was missing, we have now achieved it on that basis, decolonize us. Yet they don't and you have to come back here year on year to hear Spain uh, you know, communicate the same messages to the fourth committee and the committee of 24 and you have to counter them. Are you getting at all tired of this? Well, I will never get tired of the privilege of representing the people of Gibraltar at the United Nations. There's a general election this year. I hope that they will entrust me with the privilege of coming here again next year. But look, we have to hear this from Spain, not just at the United Nations. We hear it daily in the European Union. And part of what the fight of the Gibraltar government is, is to be able to demonstrate to whichever institution it is that Spain presents the argument in the way that they do. They're, they're arguments which are not based on fact, which are very often based on utter falsehoods and to there argue for the people of Gibraltar is what government in Gibraltar is about. Look, I think that's what diplomacy internationally is sometimes about for all states. Look at what Russia says about Syria and what the United States about, says about Syria and what the United Kingdom says about what is happening in Syria. You know, one man's terrorist is another man's freedom's fighter. So that is what we are about when we go outside of Gibraltar, not just the chief minister and, and the political government, but all the other organizations that go and make Gibraltar's case, whether it's in a sporting forum or elsewhere, to demonstrate that we, Gibraltar, are entitled to our own representation despite that which Spain says, simply because it hasn't got enough with so much of the territory of Spain that it enjoys and wants that extra two and a half square miles at the bottom southern end of its geography. Absolute and utter nonsense. And you've also highlighted that whereas Spain has in the past denied some of the shootings in Gibraltar waters, on this occasion they have accepted it. What's the significance of that? Well, you know that they were very upset that I mentioned the fact that they'd fired rubber balls at the jet skier. Although there was a video which demonstrated that, and although David Liddington and David Cameron made complaints about that, but when I came to the United Nations and said it, you know, all hell broke loose and it was terrible that I'd come here. Of course, because they were embarrassed internationally at what they had done. Now, because a video emerged that demonstrated that the shots were fired, quickly the Spanish administration admitted that the shots were fired, Moments after, or hours after the video appeared on the internet, I think GBC got the video and put it out publicly. So it's important that the United Nations sees this, that they deny things, but there are videos that demonstrate that they happened. Sometimes they don't deny them, and there are videos that also demonstrate that they happened. They need to see that Spain says one thing and does another. And it's important whether it's video evidence of instances that demonstrate that, much as you might in court as a lawyer, you might say to the United Nations Committee, if they've lied to you about one thing and there's video evidence of the opposite, what else might they have lied to you about?